guys, Mr. Wilhelm here. Today I'm here to discuss force, work, and simple machines. Let's start off by defining force. A force is a push or pull. Now that's a pretty broad definition because there are all sorts of pushing and pulling that occurs on a daily basis. Uh, as you come to your seat and get to your seat class, you pull your chair out so that you can sit down. You push or pull the classroom door open. As you're walking down the hallway, your legs are pushing against the ground and moving you forward. These are all forces. You're applying a force to push or pull. It could be your pencil moving across your paper. You're constantly pushing and pulling on your pencil to create letters and numbers. Okay, so a force gives an energy to an object to start moving, stop moving, or change direction. Let's go back to your example of the pencil. When you pick up your pencil and you start to write, you start your pencil moving. Okay, you start pushing that pencil across the paper. You're applying a force. When you get to the end of your word or the end of your sentence, you stop your pencil moving. Again, you're applying a force to your pencil. And then all throughout the writing process, whether you're writing a word or writing a sentence, you're constantly changing the direction of your pencil. You're applying a force. Force is measured in a unit called a Newton. We abbreviate Newtons with a capital N. So, Newton is a unit for force, just as meters is a unit for distance, grams is a unit for mass, and degrees Celsius is a unit for temperature. Newtons comes from a name of a person, uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was a scientist, a very brilliant scientist that lived long ago. Uh, you may have heard of him before. He has a lot of things named after him, such as Newton's three laws of motion. He came up with the three laws of motion that you guys will study later on, uh, such as an action for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. He also came up with the concept of gravity. Even though gravity always existed, he's the one that kind of put a name to it. Uh, you may have seen the cartoon uh, of the apple falling from the tree and landing on top of Isaac Newton's head, and all of a sudden he comes up with this idea, this concept, gravity. Okay, so Isaac Newton, very smart scientist, lived long ago, and the unit for force is named after him. There are two types of forces, unbalanced forces and balanced forces. Um, if you have two forces that are acting against each other, and one force is greater than the other, if one force is greater than the other, then that force is said to be unbalanced. Okay, one force is stronger than the other. In this case, an object is going to move. There's going to be movement of an object. Okay, so if you take a book and push it across the table, the book is moving. Okay, the force of you pushing the book is greater than the resistance force of that book to stay still. Okay, forces are unbalanced. If you're walking down the hallway, forces are unbalanced. There's movement. Car going down the street, forces are unbalanced. There is movement. If you drop your pencil, the force of gravity is greater than the force of you holding your pencil up. There's movement. Forces are unbalanced. The exact opposite is balanced forces. Okay, so balanced forces, if forces are balanced, there is no movement. Going back to the book on the desk, if a book is sitting on your desk and it's completely still, gravity is trying to pull the, the book down, your desk is essentially trying to resist the force of gravity and hold the book up. Neither gravity is winning or the desk, therefore there is no movement, forces are balanced. Work. Now that we understand force, we can take a closer look at work. Work is a force acting over a distance. Okay? Now usually, 
when I say work, you probably think of doing homework or your parents uh, going to work, maybe your teacher hollering at you saying, get back to work. Those are all examples of work. However, if we're talking about the science of example, work is associated with movement. Okay? When a force is being applied and an object moves. Okay? You push a cart down the hallway. You're pushing, you're applying a force, and the cart is moving over a distance of moving down the hallway. That's work. Um, your pencil, going again back to your pencil and paper. If you move your pencil across the paper, you're causing your pencil to move. You're applying a force. The pencil is moving over a distance. It's moving. That's work. Okay. Um, now, if the object is not moving, then work is not being done, even though you might be applying a force. Say the door is locked, and you go up and you try to open the door. You push and push and push on that door. You're exerting all sorts of force. You're pushing. You're exerting a force. However, the door does not open. The door does not move. That means work is not being done. Work can only occur. Work is only being done when a force moves an object. There has to be movement. So if you're pushing on that door and that door is not moving, moving, work is zero. No work is being done. Even though you might be struggling and putting forth all sorts of force, work is zero. Some examples of work might be a push or a lift or a throw. Okay? Those are very similar to, obviously, the definition of force being push or pull. Okay? But you're moving an object over a distance. We can actually come up with a numerical value, a number value for work. Okay, we can calculate work. Okay, work is simply calculated by taking force and multiplying it by distance. Force times distance. We can abbreviate this equation. Instead of writing out this entire equation and all these words, we can simply put W equals F times D. Work equals force times distance. Okay. Force, we already stated, is measured in newtons. Distance, we typically measure distance in meters. You guys already knew that. Measure distance in meters. Work is measured in a unit called a joule. And we abbreviate that with a capital J. So force is measured in newtons. Distance is measured in meters. Work is measured in joules. So if I'm going to calculate a problem, sometimes the easiest way is to simply look for these units and plug them into the appropriate spots. So let's look at an example problem. If you looked at an object weighing 200 newtons through a distance of 0.5 meters, how much work would you do? Well, we start off by writing our equation. Okay, Work equals force times distance. Now, all I do is go up to my problem and find the force and find the distance and plug them in. Well, I know that force is measured in newtons, so right here, 200, that's my force. And I know that distance is measured in meters, right here's an M for meters, okay, so 0.5, there's my distance. All I do is take those two numbers and plug them into my equation. So my force is 200. Okay, my distance is 0.5 meters. Okay, and then I simply take the clue and multiply. So if I take 200 times 0.5, it's going to give me 100, and the unit for work is joules. Simple machines. A machine is something that makes the job easier. Okay, it makes the job easier. Instead of having to do all that work myself, I can use a machine and it's going to make the whole thing a whole lot easier. Uh, for example, a car. Okay, I could walk to the grocery store, which would be a little bit more difficult, take more effort, would take uh, more time. Or I can use a machine, like a car, to get to the store. It makes, it makes the whole thing easier. Simple machines are machines, but they're 
as the term says, simple. Okay? Whereas a complex machine, like a car, has multiple interacting parts. So simple machines, tools, very simple tools, that make work easier. Okay? Now, the same amount of work is done, whether you use the machine or not. The exact same amount of work is done. We can calculate this, and we are going to calculate this. The same amount of work is done whether you use the machine or not. However, what changes is the force. Less force is required, less force is required whenever I'm working with a simple machine. So let's look at some examples of simple machines. Again, these are simple. A lever is a simple machine. It's a rigid bar with a pivot point. Now, rigid simply means stiff. A rigid bar is a stiff bar with a pivot point. A pivot point is a point where it can go back and forth. So here on my scissors, I have actually two bars, one, two, and then the pivot point is right here in the middle. Okay? This is a simple machine. Scissors, screwdriver, seesaw. These are all examples of levers, which is a simple machine. Incline plane. Incline plane. Very simple machine. It's a ramp. Okay? It's much easier to push something up a ramp than to simply lift it and pick it up. It's going to take less force to push it up that ramp than it is going to pick it up vertically and put it in the back of the vehicle. Okay? So, again, a simple machine. It's a flat surface. One side is higher than the other. A ramp or slide. These are all considered to be inclined planes. Simple machines. A pulley. A pulley is a wheel with a groove. And you have a rope that goes around the wheel. It changes the direction of the force. So I might be pulling up on the rope, okay, in that direction. And then on the other side, the rope is going to go down in that direction. Best example here is a flag pole. It's much easier to attach that flag at the bottom of the pole and stand on the ground and pull it down on the rope while the flag goes up. Versus trying to climb that flag pole and get to the very top and attach the flag. That's a pulley. A wedge is a door stop, simply a triangular shaped object I can stick in a door. It's going to hold the door open. Makes my job easier. I don't have to stand out there and hold the door open myself. A wedge. Could also be something like an axe used to split wood. Wheel and axle. Very, very important simple machine. Not necessarily the bicycle here, but the wheel that goes around the center point, which is the axle. We use wheels and axles all the time, cars, bicycles, can be internal engine parts, okay? all sorts of uh, examples of wheels and axles. A screw, you may not have thought about it, but a screw is a simple machine. It brings things together. Okay? You turn it and it has these threads, and these threads are going to bind things together, connect things together hold things together. Again, it makes the whole job easier. Screw. Cylinder with threads wrapped around it. It could also be like a propeller off of an airplane or a boat. Okay, this is our lesson over force work in simple machines. Hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.